90% of the rest of these books are political intrigue and trying to kill God. And he's like, no, it was the the government. The government did it. Chill. It's like, it's like, um, bringing your Midwest relatives to the King of England, essentially. And live your life because it's gonna end soon. It makes sense if you sit there for five hours and think about it, but he's like pulling on my recorder. Okay, anyway. Don't touch the cord. That's what we're learning today. Don't touch the cord. Don't touch the cord. Don't touch the cord. Anyway, so hey, welcome to I Don't Know What I Just Read featuring Jane and the Mirror Visitor series. I read the entire Mirror Visitor series over the last year because I read the first one and then I couldn't get through it and so I put it away and then I finished it and then I was like, this is so good, why didn't I finish this? So I read the rest of them and then I was like, oh. So, <laughs> today, I'll be reviewing these and you get to just listen because I'm always right. Constantly. Clearly. I already recorded this video once. However, the sound quality was not good. I will be trying to re-record this video. Um, I already deleted the last one, so hopefully this works. I read the Mirror Visitor series by Christelle Davos, and I, I liked it, but I also didn't like it. So I definitely will not be refraining from spoilers, so if you're interested in reading this, just know that I do recommend reading it, but skip. Skip. So far ahead. So far ahead. The first book that I read, obviously, was the first one, and that was The Winner's Promise, A Winner's Promise by Christelle Davos, and let me tell you, it's kind of boring. Mostly, so if anyone's ever tell, told you to read these because they're enemy to lovers, while that's objectively true, they're failing to mention that that's only 10% of these books. 90% of the rest of these books are political intrigue and trying to kill God. I'm not kidding. So, and then finding out that God's not the bad guy. It turns out God's shadow is the bad guy. So like literally like an antichrist situation going on here. I'll start from the beginning. The main girl is named Ophelia and she's from, they have these like, it's not earth, but it's earth that's been obliterated and now we have these little pieces of land just floating around that people can live on, which doesn't work in real life if you didn't know. Um, and as such, <laughs> she's on this one named Anima and she has like magic powers, um, but like so do most people. So like it's not weird to not have magic power, to have magic powers um, because they're all descended from their like matriarch demigod lady um and each arc has a different ruler who's all dem they're all demigods and there's like 21 of them or something and each one has a different superpower basically and so each person basically inherited some of that superpower um and as such she has the ability um to animate objects but not very much like she has a scarf that she wears all the time, and so it bit, becomes sentient because of how much the owner, she uses it. And so it has a mind of its own, pretty much, and that's one of the powers. And then, like, I don't know, she can read books with her hands. So if she touches something with her bare hands, she then can read it. But what that means is, is like, the last human who touched it, she can read what their emotions were and their thoughts were when they were touching that object. So it's like not the literal history of the object but the emotional personal histories of the people who own the object beforehand which means that she will not read an object unless she has expressed permission from the owner because she learns so much stuff just like touching things is wild to me and she's like i don't want to get married girl no absolutely not i'm not getting married and her mom got married at like 17 her sister's married at like 20 and has children and stuff her mom's like you need to get married and she's like oh no i'm good i'm gonna go run my little museum just have artifacts all the time but because she's refusing to marry and because she it works in an area of society that's heavily monitored by the like leaders the dioens the dioens i don't know it's a bunch of old ladies who rule anima <laughs> she's like kind of like she's not a criminal but they got their eye on her you know and like her great uncle is also one of those people and so 
basically they decide because she keeps rejecting marriage offers from other people they arrange a political marriage between her and this guy named thorn who is this guy she has never met him he's from a different arc called the pole which is basically like russia but if you had louis the 15th court who also are all murdering each other and poisoning each other and have superpowers uh, that's the whole first book, is just King Louis the Fifteenth Court, so, so Louis the Fifteenth Court, which was very, like, frivolous and lots of partying and just very, like, shallow frivolities, basically, just in abundance, and they didn't do anything else. They just drank, drank and partied all the time and didn't take care of their people. They just were like, haha, mm, what if? Yeah, so she marries into this court, essentially. He's an illegitimate child, not, like, technically a real like claw like what are they called i don't know anyway she's forcefully engaged to this guy he comes to anima to pick her up on an airship because by the way there's these giant chasms of just air between all of these arcs and he picks her up and they immediately hate each other because he's like you need to say no to this marriage you need to cancel this marriage and she's like why don't you cancel it then like i thought you did this and he's like no it was the the government the government did it and he's like, you could break it off though. And then she's like, no, because if I break it off, then I'm gonna get literally banished from society. So both of them hate each other because neither of them will, will like just break it off. Also, he's just really brusque and like kind of cold and he just, he's very mechanical, mathematical. Um, he just like counts things all the time. He's really down to like seconds and minutes and very like, he just wants the, 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 the facts, and he doesn't want any emotions, he doesn't want anything else, he just wants facts. Turns out he is the treasurer for the poll, the, like, the head treasurer, which reads completely for his math obsession. Um, but everyone hates him, apparently, and so she has to hide that she's his fiancé. And so the whole first book, she doesn't, she sees him, like, maybe five times. And the whole rest of the time, she's living with his aunt, who's, like, kind of awful. His grandmother, who wants to murder her or murder other people so that she won't she'll get thrown in prison like whatever happens there's no way they're getting married that kind of thing for all everyone's awful basically his sister his half sister basically tries to kill ophelia in like chapter four or something like and she's literally her head in a brace her neck's in a brace okay this these books are so violent but they're described but the way that she writes it is so like eloquent and chill and maybe friend I'm registering how much violence is really occurring until you're talking about it to someone and they're like what so yeah anyway so the whole first book she, she pretends to be a servant for aunt baronelle's aunt and she has to disguise herself as a guy because a new girl would be suspicious but a guy no one cares and she becomes friends with people so she gets to see this whole court in like its frivolity but she sees everything that's going on behind it like all the illusion magical illusions that are put up to hide the, the dereliction that's across the entire city it you know hides like the poverty and the neglect and everything that like regular people are going through like especially people who don't have powers like they're just like i guess i'll just be a servant forever and like that's the whole first book and then finally she's like introduced but she's just constantly getting abused in this book not by thorn Thorn's like the only person who's never laid a hand on her, which is like, I appreciate that. So she can travel through mirrors. That's why it's called the mirror visitor, because she can travel through mirrors. So if she sees a mirror and she recognizes herself in it, basically she has to do this mental thing where she's like, I am me and like, and like accepts any things she's hiding from herself, basically, which comes in later when she won't admit that she loves Thorn and then she can't travel through mirrors because she's lying to herself and I found that so funny. Anyway, so, mm, it was kind of boring for like the first half of the book and then it kind of got good and then once I figured out what was going on, so once you have that, once you get all the world building down, which is what this book is, this book is essentially just world building. She like goes from wanting to murder Thorn to like not wanting to murder him but still not happy that they're getting married. But like they've decided that they have mutual interests so they're working together so versailles that's what i was thinking of the poisonous politics of versailles yes in louis the 15th court versailles was very chaotic he like kept everyone in the court he wouldn't let them go anywhere else he's like you're living here and like 
it was not a good time. Like, you know when you hear about, you know when people are like, did you know that they would just go to the bathroom on the floor? Like, they didn't go to the, they had service to clean it up. That's from that court. That's from the Versailles court. So, that's the kind of world she's dealing with. People trying to kill her constantly, right? Okay. Then, we get the missing of Claire de Lune, which is the second one. And that one, mmm, delicious, okay? So, like, this one, maybe three stars, three and a half, because I started liking it towards the end, and that's why I even read the next one. Claire de Lune is muy delicious. She is now out as his fiance. Her family comes to visit for the wedding and her family is just as meddlesome as the Versailles court. They just don't want to murder people. They're like, they're chill. It's like, it's like, um, bringing your Midwest relatives to the King of England, essentially. I was like, every time I read Anima, I was like, this is the Midwest. That's how I felt reading it. And then <laughs> France. So, <laughs> so with Miss Nia Claire de Lune, she's like, recognized as his fiance. People still want to kill her, but she and Thorne are working together and they're like, he's down bad for her, okay? He falls so fast for this girl. It's hilarious. And I think it's literally just because, like, she, she has such a tenacity to survive. Like, he didn't think that she was going to last, like, period, in the poll because there's murder. Like, he figured either she'd get killed or she would leave with her mother and go back home. She doesn't. And so I think that he just, like, totally respects that, which is really funny. But, but... now that you have a handle on the world that you're in, you then have to deal with the consequences of this world and as such there's been people going missing in the poll and for some reason the demigod is kind of obsessed with her like not literally because he has he's not amnesia but he has like bad memory so he doesn't keep track of anything really well he has a guy who takes notes for him uh farouk has a guy who takes no notes for him because he literally he has a like his memory just doesn't work which is really weird because he has like all these great powers and like is really hot apparently because a lot of women really are into him and he has like favorites that just follow him around so he like really likes takes a takes interest in ophelia although he doesn't know why and she doesn't know why but he's like you remind me of someone like someone that i used to know and she thinks he means his sister her ancestor because that's the demigod from anima and she's like okay sure whatever he's first she's appointed as the uh, royal storyteller and she gets a book of stories from anima and reads them to like the court while people are still trying to kill her and she's just trying to get married to thorn but meanwhile she also finds out that the reason thorn wanted gotten and get a proposal with her in the first place was because he needs a reader the best reader on anima who can read with her hands remember she can touch objects and read them he needs the best reader on anima because he wants to read the demigod's book which each demigod has a book that basically has their history in it but it's in a language that no one can decipher and it's it's totally a mystery to everyone and so for like years people have been studying this and so he basically made an agreement with Farouk that if he read his book and told him what he wanted to, what Farouk wants to know, then Thorne would be given a legitimate position in society because the only reason he has a position is because he is the treasurer. Otherwise he would be trashed because he's an illegitimate child of two different clans who have two different powers. So he has really long memory that he inherited from his mother and that memory literally goes back generations. And so he's like, maybe if I read the book, he'll give me a real position. I'll be a real Lord. And then that would also protect him from a lot of the, atrocities committed <laughs> at the poll so yeah and they have some friends they have like the the bitch ambassador the royal ambassador of the poll who is like a ladies man and he's literally like the first person that ophelia meets on uh, other than thorn's family and he's like mm, i would love to sleep with thorn's fiance like that's how he sounds he's like i want to sleep with thorn's fiance Ophelia and then like she disappears because she's gonna go be a, be a servant and so when they meet again he's like he did not sleep with her to be clear but it was it, I hate him in the first like the first book the first uh, winner's promise I hate him but he grows on me I love him now um, he's also like straight up dying from cancer in the fourth book so I'm kind of emotionally attached now. So I'm missing a clarity when people are literally going missing. And so Farouk calls a meeting. So people are going missing and 
some of the clans are linked mentally and so if people are like in this deep sleep for too long it'll affect the other part of their other people in their clan and the ambassador goes missing and he's in that clan so all of his sisters are just passing out all the time and can barely talk um and so they're like we're gonna have to sever his connection to his clan so that like people can live like they give up on these missing people and ophelia's like no i'm gonna go find them i'm special i can find them and decides and so fruit's like fine and he makes her like the family investigator because they're all like clan families so she's the family investigator archibald archibald ambassador archibald um also he definitely is ophelia's real friend like in the book like even though he has ulterior motives too they're like normal ulterior motives versus like everyone else who wants to murder her um, so she's friends with him and thorn is so jealous it's so funny like it's so clear how down bad thorn is because he's so jealous of this ambassador guy who like wouldn't be against sleeping with ophelia but at some point he like decides to like find someone else he just sleeps with everyone which all right buddy <laughs> um live your life because it's gonna end soon she's friends with him and so he goes missing and she's like i gotta find my friend like i gotta find my buddy my guy and i uh, there's like literally so much plot stuff i can't even go over everything so philly and thorn just learn to work together finding um, this ambassador and all the other victims and they save him but they do almost get murdered in the process by this other guy who's like an agent of god literally he's like trying to stop them from their purposes which their end goal is both of them ophelia and thorn although they don't talk to each other about it both of them want to discover the secrets of the past in like these demigod books that there are and then like there was the whole rupture with like the world exploding and becoming all these arcs and they're all like what does that mean what could it mean and so they want to find out what that is and so they're getting closer and closer to the truth and so god's like mm, don't do that and like sending people after them so this one guy tries to kill them and then thorn kills him defending ophelia with his like magic claw power Rawr. um and like gets put in prison before they're even married meanwhile meanwhile his aunt has since fallen in love with farouk the ancestor the demigod guy her ancestor and had a, is, is pregnant now with a child with his child and so they're trying to defend her, protect her, because everyone wants to kill her now. So they're trying to protect her while also like trying to figure out where everyone went when he commits murder for Ophelia. And so he gets put in prison and they get married in jail while he's in prison. Because she thinks that if that if they can read Farouk's book, then Farouk will not kill Thorne. Because the the punishment that he was given for killing this other guy because they couldn't explain why they killed him which was a good reason and it was like self-defense and all this stuff um then he basically was given a very biased sentence and so Farouk has the power to take your powers away and they like put a giant mark across your face to be like they have no more powers and depending on what that is it could really mess you up like Thorne's mom was a memory lady and so now she basically is like young like in her 40s or something but she has no memory she's just kind of like not fully there so she's like ophelia's like that's not gonna happen to you if we just read this book then we can do it and that's what farouk agrees to so she marries thorn in prison so that she can get his powers because oh so when they get married on the pole they exchange powers so they each get a little bit of each other so he gets to become a mirror visitor she has his claws that's what it is she gets his claws so she gets his claws so she gets the little things that are invisible but they will kill i think she finally gets to read the book she says something to farouk that basically makes him acquit thorn and then while she she spent the whole night with thorn trying to teach him how to like mirror travel and read with his hands and like all the stuff that she gave him and farouk basically acquits him after that but by the time they get oh god shows up and tries to kill them see i told you there's so much violence going on god shows up and tries to kill them while he's in prison i don't remember how they succeed against him but they basically team up and like kick him back out turns out he's a metamorphosis he can like 
change shape and look like anything which is like a dangerous thing but he has no reflection so they can find him if they need to thorn gets acquitted but he doesn't know this and he mirror travels through the gold reflection of the prison yeah the prison's all in gold by the way he mirror travels through the glass the wind the metal he mirror travels through the metal disappears completely which is the funniest thing because right before she left he's like by the way i love you and then she leaves to go get fruit and then he just disappears for like two years okay so like baronelle has her has had her child by the end of the book and so ophelia because her husband straight up disappeared her murderous husband according to her family disappeared and she did, wasn't ready to admit that she loved him back so she's like living with this fact that he just went i love you and then she didn't say i love you too and then he disappeared um and so she goes back to anima to live with her family for like two and a half years two and a half years man and like her family is kind of awful and they're like why are you moping around why are you moping around to be fair she was moping for like two whole years but then ambassador archibald himself shows up and is like we're getting you out of here we're gonna let you escape because the diamonds are also agents of god from her place and have been keeping an eye on her so that's like what is that memory of yeah memory of babel so that's the very beginning of memory of babel is thorn has been missing for like two years so she's like 21 or something now and like Archibald just shows up and is like, hey, I'm gonna get you out of here. And she's like, oh, he's going back. And he's like, no. <laughs> and she's like, why are you here then? She's very distraught. And so he saves her. And then he sets her up with like a secret identity and then sends her off to Babel, which is a different arc, which is a different floating island. Because that's where Thorn was last, like possibly could have gone. The one-off attempt um, to like find him. And so she goes to Babel and basically she figures out that like, it turns out this is where the demigods were created by god so the last two books are so existential like the first two are what's ophelia's place in thorn's life what's she going to do on the pole how is she going to get married they're slowly falling in love but also like god's trying to murder them because they're trying to figure out mysteries but it's like small brain mysteries okay like i can comprehend these mysteries these mysteries chaos absolute chaos like they make sense if you sit there for five hours and think about it but it's so dense and complicated also each one of these books is like 500 pages like like 2,000 words or 2,000 pages I mean oh so, the third one Babel she ends up in an academic school trying to like basically that's the only way you can get information is if you become a scholar and so she became a scholar so she could get information she fails very badly at being a scholar but she does find out a lot of information about god she also finds out like it's just it's so world buildy i can't even like explain everything it's steampunky which is fun she meets like this kid who's like kind of weird and he's inverted which inverted in this book specifically means that he has something switched about him so his legs and arms are switched so his right is on his left side his left is on his right side so his movements are pretty off and he uses a wheelchair just kind of like all over the place she does see thorn it turns out thorn is literally pretending to be a noble a noble of um of babel and she has to pretend not to recognize him and then he like asks for her to be his like assistant and so they have to pretend not to know each other and then they're like and then he's every single time they meet up he's like do you have something to tell me and she's like no she's like totally oblivious and he's like i just want her to say i love you back but the end of babel babel is my favorite one so like so like, i really like missing a claire to but babel delicious because they finally love each other they finally are like i love you i love you wow that's fantastic look we're married now oh look we can like spend time together it's fantastic i love it so much the tension is real it's there and that's like 10 percent of the book so so yeah she's just like going from place to place to place to place it's like very questy the entire series is very questy like you have to go here and then you gotta go there 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 it's like reading the hobbit but in like four books 
like by the end of the series they have figured out that god was not trying to kill them god was stuck on the wrong side so there's an inversion of reality they're on the right side up here and she's on the bottom side yeah god's a woman um, she's on the bottom side turns out she's also not even god she called her last name gond and it was misheard and misspoken over the centuries which is wild to me the weirdest way to name someone god but turns out she's not the bad guy her shadow is her shadow became her it's, it's called like an echo and basically became its own person and started like basically pretended to be god while she was stuck on the other side for like a hundred years and so time doesn't pass over there so she's still alive the echo can't die because it's not a real person so that's still alive ophelia and thorn are like what's happening also this whole time they've been like they've been like ophelia let let the bad guy out through a mirror like all this stuff turns out she let god out through a mirror which from the other side basically end of the book is like what is god what is life who are people and it turns out that like um the the demigods are almost like flesh code like they're coded robot like people almost with coded pieces that'll influence their behavior but they're flesh they're human they're human bodies they can have children and like oh and does Ophelia and Thorn end up happily ever ever after together after four years of suffering through everything? No. Thorn gets stuck on the other side and Ophelia's like, I'm gonna go find him. And that's the end of the book. They defeat the Echo, who's like awful and just like destroying everything. And what happens is, is the wrong side and the right side get merged together. So suddenly all of that world that they thought was empty space is back. They have a full planet again, apparently, and um, all these people who were stuck on the wrong side are from like 150 years ago, and none of them speak because language wasn't a thing there. You couldn't have written word of any kind, so any books that were over there were destroyed, um, like just completely. And so, so they're joined with the regular world that we've been talking about. But there's some people that were fed into the other world that weren't there from the beginning, but they were fed into it through this machine that's at like this laboratory that Ophelia was like voluntarily incarcerated at so that she could find out what was going on. But no, Thorn ends up stuck on the other side because he was fed through this machine thing so he didn't come through with everyone else. So Ophelia decides that she's just gonna go find him and she mirror visits. Also, she's missing her fingers now. So no fingers because she can't read objects anymore. It's chaos. It's it's chaos incarnate. Basically, you could read these first two books and probably be fine. I don't know why Thorn keeps disappearing, but these two are very different from the last two. And so I would definitely like, uh, to be clear, I didn't buy any of these until I had already read the first three and decided I liked it. So Storm of Echoes is the last one, and that one I also really love, but that's because I like being confused, which is a weird thing to say, I admit that. Um, but I've read other books where I'm just like totally confused for most of it, and I'm, I, I can vibe. The art is really pretty. Like, all of these have gorgeous, gorgeous covers on them. It's like such a gorgeous, like you can see, like, this is, this is the Poles court, and then down below, they have all their peasants, so they're separated from each other. That's why you don't see them that much, but it's just so beautiful. Like, look at this one. It's trains. Victoria. Oh, Victoria's in this as a as like a perspective. She's like three, and that's like half of the book. Hence why I don't remember half of the book, because it was so boring. Because it's a three-year-old's perspective. She is force ghosting herself across the galaxy, essentially. She, her body is just limp at her mother's house in a baby carriage her mother's distraught because she's lost like four children they were all murdered by other people and so she's like distraught and this baby is just laying there she's still breathing but she's just laying there and like she's force ghosted herself to over to where other characters that we've met in the previous books are and hanging out with them so that we can get their perspectives but it's weird and i don't really care that much so i was just like why this book could be half of the size i'm not kidding half 
of the sides and we would be fine. We did not need to know what was going on. The only reason Victoria was there was for a character arc at the end for Thorne to be like, I'm no longer jealous of my infant cousin who took my, my place in my aunt's heart because his aunt raised him. His mother, essentially. And he's like, I'm no longer jealous of this infant. And I'm like, wow, character growth. Didn't know you were. Forgot about that, honestly. But good for you, I guess. So, I... So, overall, this one, three out of five. Missing a Claire de Lune, four stars, I think. I'm gonna say four stars. Um, then we had Memory of Babel, which, again, odd. But I'm gonna give it four stars because I love me the Ophelia and Thorn interactions. They're... Storm of Echoes, five stars, only because, no, four and a half stars, four and a half stars, it's not perfect, but four and a half stars, because I was confused the whole time, but I enjoy that, I think that book taste is sometimes a little subjective, and in this case, it's a subjective four and a half, because objectively, it's probably like a three, but I loved it, so definitely recommend trying these out, um, they're a good fantasy read because they're just this huge world building and it's one of the better world buildings that I've come across like it's not Tolkien but it is really good so definitely recommend checking them out but you do not have to finish if you can barely get through the first two do not even bother getting through these two because it's not gonna get better it's gonna get worse so that's that's the winner what what is it that that's the mirror visitor books um Yeah, this is going to be a long video. Um, so, yeah, definitely recommend reading them, but just try the first two first to see if you can get into the last two because it really doesn't get better. Um, it's definitely way more world-related. Like, yeah, anyway. Anyway, high-key recommend, low-key. Do not expect you to finish anybody to finish all four of them because it's a lot. Also, what really helped is I listened to the first one on audiobook while I like did other stuff. So like while I would get ready for work and stuff, I would just put it on, and so that really helped with this one. Um, but it, it depends on the person. So yeah. <laughs> anyway, I probably give the entire st series like a three just because like the first two don't line up with the second two and so it doesn't super work as a full four book series it, um, it like has the same characters but they're just going on different adventures you know so maybe i would say a three three and a half three yeah three stars for the entire series i super respect the world building in it it's just a little dense a little much a little confusing um but yeah so anyway i hope you all enjoyed this and if you did read this series let me know what you think because i have no one else that i know who read this i i don't remember where i got this recommendation from but it was definitely like one of those videos that's like you want to read an enemies to lovers book and then listed this and i was like sure and then i started reading it and i was like this is political intrigue this is not a romance book so anyway i hope you all are having a good day it's like 80 degrees outside so i'm gonna go take a hike literally but <laughs>